Hello everyone and welcome to module 5. We have two assignments for this module. Uh, this is uh, the first assignment and we need to basically create a Dynamo database and populate it with two tables. One is going to be for the questions table and then the other is going to be for the answers table. So I have already logged into AWS and from the console home you can either go to one of your recently visited or you can type it up here. So I want to go to Dynamo DB. I just type Dynamo and, and here it is. Now what I always like to do is uh, I like to right click and then open up a new tab. So that way I have multiple tabs open and I can go between different services very quickly. So this is my Dynamo DB and right now I, when it comes up I don't have any uh, tables. Okay, so I'm going to create my very first table, which is click on this. I'm going to call my first table question. Now, tables, you have to understand uh, no, DynamoDB is a NoSQL database. So basically, it's schemaless, schemaless, which means it's different than the relational database where we have uh, you know, columns and rows and we have relationships between the primary key and the uh, foreign keys. Uh, so it will take some getting used to and to wrap your head around this concept of no schema for a database, but there's a huge benefit to it, and we'll find about that uh, pretty soon. So part of a no SQL uh, table is we have to give it a partition key. Well, there's also a sort key, but we're not going to worry about that for this class. But partition key is basically like the uh, like the primary key in the relational uh, databases. So for my partition key, the assignment says to give it a attribute name of ID and keep it a string and that's all we have to do so I'm creating a table I'm gonna call it a name which is question and I'm gonna give it a partition key which is like the unique key for it the UUID for example or the GOID I'm gonna call it ID for short and it's a string type it could be different types as you can see here but I'm gonna be using the string for this one and then all you have to do is just scroll all the way down and click on create table it does take a few seconds or maybe up to a minute to create the table so you, we need to wait until the creating uh, has stopped uh, in the meantime I can also even though it's not the exact steps for the assignment but I'm gonna click on create table now and also create my answer table while we're at it I'm also gonna give the uh, partition key ID you can see up here now that the question table has been created successfully and again the string type for the ID now I'm, I'm not following the exact steps or the sequence in the assignment, but it's basically the same thing. The end result is going to be the same thing. And then I'm going to create table. So while the uh, answer table is being created, I already have my question table created. So if you click on it, it takes into the, the uh, table details. Uh, there's some information here. Now, not much we can see yet because we didn't populate anything uh, regarding the table. If I click on explore table items, uh, I currently have nothing returned. You can scan the table, uh, but again, don't do this if you have huge tables. But since we have a small table, we can click on scan and then run. And basically, again, it ran, but it's, it's a small table, so there's nothing in it. And now we need to create uh, basically our records or our rows in the, uh, in the question table. You can click up here, create item, or you can click down here, create item. So let's do that. Now the the assignment gives us the uh, the first record to add. So I'm going to scroll all the way down here since I did all this already. Okay, so this is the first record for our uh, question table. Now this is JSON format, and again, it's uh, basically it starts with these squiggly brackets, which uh, is JSON format, but it's also dictionary format and uh, the dictionary format is basically you have a name or I'm sorry you have a key and then you have the value of that key so it's key value pair okay so we have a you can think of these keys as your columns and you know, again a relational database but again we're not relational we're no SQL but I just wanted to tie the old with the new uh, so this would be a column called ID this would be another column called category category slug so these are all the category th these are all the column names and then these are the values that you would find in these uh, rows okay so we have a column called ID that's its value we have a column called category slug and that's its value
Okay, we call these attributes in NoSQL. All right. So um, I just copied this right from the uh, right from this document. I'm going to go back to here now. You can add attributes one by one. Okay, by clicking here, attribute name, and then add one, and so on. But this is very time consuming. The quick way is to basically go through the JSON uh, view. So this page is where we enter in our uh, copy JSON. Now, one thing to note here is that this says view DynamoDB JSON. Now, this is a bit different than this uh, JSON formatting. Okay, so since I'm not going to be using the DynamoDB JSON format, I'm going to uncheck it. And then I'm going to highlight all this, erase it, and I'm going to paste. Oops, go back here. Let me copy this. And then from here, I'm going to paste it. So now I pasted the JSON for my first record. So I'm creating an item in my question table. All right, that's going to populate all this information. Now, I already do have an ID attribute in my uh, in my question table, but I don't have all these attributes here. I don't have this, 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 or this. So the nice thing about NoSQL is because it's schemaless, I can add any attribute and the record will keep expanding with new attributes in the table. So that's one of the key differences is it's very flexible. I can add records and the way the record that gets added, it will modify the table to have all these attributes in them. So now I've, again, the questions table only has an ID attribute, but now this insert record, because I'm adding a new record or I'm adding a new item, this item will then expand the existing table, the existing question table, and to add all these attributes based on this insert or based on this create item. All right, so I'm going to click on create item. And now notice how my record used to be, uh, the table only used to have an ID column. Now I have an answers column. Again, it's an attribute or this category slug or negative votes or positive votes or question or question slug. So this table got reformatted or rebuilt into all these columns, all these attributes because of my insert statement. Okay, the create item had all these attributes in it, and so the, the table completely was redesigned. Okay, so this is, you might think this is weird, this is different, this is crazy, but it is a flexibility and an advantage in using NoSQL databases. Okay, so now I have my question table, and now I have a record inside of it. Uh, to look more into this record and see if you want to edit anything, you can click on the ID, which is the partition key, and that expands it to this window. And here you can edit all any of these values, or you can even remove them. Okay, this is in the form format, what we're looking at. If you want to work with JSON, you click on JSON view. And now, again, this is, this is what DynamoDB JSON looks like. Okay, now if you turn this off, now we're back to JSON format. Okay, so it's either this format or this format. I prefer always just a regular JSON format. Okay, since I'm not making any changes, I'm just going to cancel out of this. But now we have our table and we have our first record. Uh, if you hover over your ID, you can edit it or you can also copy it. Now, uh, copying it says the attribute has been copied. We will be using this feature in the second part of the uh, module assignment because we will be adding uh, questions and answers and we need to use this ID for uh, for our Lambda functions. All right, so that was adding this uh, item in the question table. And then the instructions keep going and they tell us to, yep, and then we need to do the same thing, creating an answer table. So I already created an answer ta table and I gave the partition key the name ID and the type string. So now I'm going to populate the question, the uh, answer table with our first uh, item. Now notice here it says make sure that the question ID matches the ID used for an item in your question table. Okay. Again, the whole the whole idea or what we're trying to build here is we're trying to build a database that has tables for questions and answer. And typically an answer is usually related to a question. So that's why we need to make sure that to tie the answer to the question that it belongs to, 
the question ID, which is an attribute in the answer table, has to match the ID in the question table. All right. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to copy this row. This is just really one row or one item that will be part of the answer table. So I'm going to go to my answer table. Here it is. And I'm going to click on create item. And I don't want the form view. I'm going to go to the JSON view. And then I'm going to turn this guy off and then paste. Now, if I do this, this question ID doesn't belong to the question that I just created. Okay, so I need to go back here. And what I usually do is when I create the question from here, again, I copy the ID, I go back here, and I'm just going to paste it here for now. All right, then I'm going to copy. Yeah, I'm sorry. Then I'm going to copy the answer again. Go back to my answer table and create item, JSON view, toggle off, paste. And now my question ID, this ID is the ID for the answer, which is fine. Okay, that's the ID for the answer because I'm creating an answer item in the table. But the question ID needs to be the same as the question ID that I created here. Copy and paste. All right. So now I should have a this question ID, which is part of the answer table, is going to point to my question that I created a moment ago. So I'm going to create item. All right. So now we have an answer that got created for us. And again, the table used to only have an ID attribute. Now, because I created an item that had an answer, negative votes, positive votes, and question ID, my table now got redesigned and expanded to include all these attributes. Okay, so I think that's all we have to do for, yep, assignment part, uh, assignment five, part one. That's all we have to do is just create a question table, a answer table, and then make sure that the ID match each other. In the next part, we're going to be using creating CRUD, which is the uh, create and uh, uh, read and update and delete functions using uh, Lambda and also uh, working with uh, permissions. So I'll stop here and then I'll make another video for the uh, second half of this assignment. And if you have any questions about this part of the assignment, please do let me know by email and thank you for watching.